everyone welcome back to the believers channel my name is modupe if this is your first time in your most welcome this is the channel where we discuss the word of god and happy new year to you all this is my first video this year on the channel and um, if this if you have just stumbled across my channel i pray you know this channel blesses you the goal of this channel is that we learn to feast on the word of god and as we also grow as we feast and you know we make the word of god practical in our day-to-day -day lives so that's the goal of this channel that every content you come across will cause you to hunger and thirst for the word of god to know god more if you want to know god go to his word so um I'm, today i'm just going to be sharing something with us um, we're going to be looking at the character study the last video on this channel um talked about a particular person and a particular book of the bible the book of philemon or philemon like some people call it but today we're going to be looking at a character that i actually find that is so underrated in the bible like people don't really talk about him and um uh, while i was studying the book of acts i was amazed and blown away by this person's um, lifestyle and I'm going to be relating what this person in our contemporary time or who the, this person in our contemporary time will most likely look like or act like um, and I just pray that this video blesses you and when you identify such people around you you don't um, take them for granted you bless them you pray for them you encourage them to continue and you also take pick one or two things from them and also you know grow and learn so um, we'll just dive straight into it. So I don't know if anybody's guessing our character. Is it Paul? Is it Peter? Is it uh, Luke? Okay, so enough of all the guesses. Okay, so our character for today is a character study, basically. And I have my journal here, my Bible to help me along the way. So our character for today starts with B. I don't know if anybody's guessing B, 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 B. Okay, so his name is Barnabas. B A R B A N A S Barnabas. So our character, so our character today is going to be Barnabas, and I'm just going to be looking at scriptures that, um, scriptures where we heard of Barnabas or it was spoken of or um, spoken about. And our first scripture this afternoon is going to be from Acts chapter four, verse thirty-six. So I just want you to follow me on this journey. As we look through the word of god together i hope this video is loud enough because my mic is not going is not working and i don't know what's going on so acts chapter 4 verse 36 and joseph who by the apostles was surnamed barnabas which is being interpreted the son of consolation a levite and of the country of cyprus having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles feet and if you look at um you know the context of this particular verse so if you start reading from verse 32 the bible says and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul and neither said any of them that out of the things which he possessed was his own but they all had all things in common and you know at that time you know that was after they got baptized in the holy ghost they started preaching the gospel uh, there was some level of persecution they decided to still stand for god and the bible said they were all together in one accord they were basically sharing everything they had and you know verse 34 said that neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of land and houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had but you know there were a lot of people that had land that had houses and they had properties that sold it and brought the contribution to the church so that everyone would have something so those people who did not have benefited from those that had and but this particular man was uh, the bible picked him out and you know he stood out but the bible says in verse 36 and joseph that means his real name is actually joseph but he was surnamed barnabas by the apostle and there was a reason why they gave him that name because the name the, the barnabas means the son of consolation he was a levite he was from the country of cyprus he sold his land and he brought his money and laid it at the apostles feet. and this was something similar that ananias and sapphira wanted to do but they did their own in um deception and they could have actually brought what they had but you know that's another story for another day so what does it mean to be a son of consolation you know it means um, um comfort receiving comfort after a person after a person has gone through maybe disappointment and so and whatever challenge they might have gone through so basically barnabas was a 
person of comfort, a person of consolation, an encourager. So Barnabas is that kind of person that you say, oh, there's church building project to go. Barnabas will be that brother or sister that will come and tell you that, huh? God is laying it in my heart, you know, that I should go and sell my car and, you know, give this money to church for the bill. And you're like, sell your car. You, do you know that? Do you know where you work compared to this thing? And it's like, no, it's very, very strong in my heart. It's not coming from the flesh, you know. It's very strong in my heart. And that person is just like, okay, then, okay, if you think God is leading you, just go and sell it for you. I just like, are you sure God is leading you? You just want to. But this, this, that kind of person, the person that gives genuinely, they give genuinely to people, they give genuinely to the work of God. And this, this is scripture where in this our contemporary times, people, you know, say, oh, they are giving all their money to, um, the kingdom work and everything um this these are some of the anchor scriptures that people have but make sure you are doing it as you are being led by the spirit not you are being not you being coerced to do it because the apostles in this case did not coerce anybody to give what they had these people gave willingly in such a way that nobody lacked in the church yeah that was and that's the mind of god that's the goal of god that nobody will lack in the church everybody's working everybody's contributing something so that one person does not have too much and some are lacking, but everyone complements one another. So Barnabas was that kind of man or woman, but in this case, there was a man that, you know, was willing to give. Another scripture that speaks to um, the life of Barnabas that I would just like us to read quickly is also in the book of Acts. <coughs> Acts chapter 9 verse 27, it says, But Barnabas took him and brought him to, to the apostles. And declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way, and how he had spoken to him, and how he and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And this was speaking of Apostle Paul. So you know, um, when Paul got converted and all of that, um, he began to preach. Then verse twenty six of that Acts chapter nine said, and when Saul, Saul was come to Jerusalem, he had said to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple, but somebody stood up for Apostle Paul, and that was Barnabas. So Barnabas would be that kind of person in the church where somebody gets converted, they are so concerned about that person. Maybe this person used to steal before and all of that, and people, when they come into the church, because you, knew, you know their history, you're kind of careful around them, or maybe they used to kill, or maybe they used to do terrible things before, and you know, things that will bring fear in the hearts of people. Barnabas is that kind of person. I was saying, no, if any man being in Christ is a new creation, all things are passed away. This person is genuinely converted. Can you see the fruit? Can't you see the fruit? No, Barnabas is that kind of person that will encourage new converts. Barnabas is that kind of person that will make new converts comfortable in the church. So maybe somebody comes to church and maybe you go to a church where you use air coverings like scarves and all of that. And maybe this person comes to church and they are genuinely converted, but they don't know about using of scars really in that denomination. Barnabas is that kind of person that will bring them in, welcome them in, sit beside them, make them comfortable in church. He's not the one that will just put the scarf on their head and just say, you tie your head. No, he will encourage them and maybe explain to them later that well, this is why we tie scarf in this church and stuff and stuff like that. You know, there's a church gathering and there's a new convert who is not yet comfortable. Maybe that person doesn't know how to, you know, dress um yeah as decent as you would because you've been a christian maybe they just come with their okay clothes and they think they are comfortable Barnabas is that kind of person that will not make them feel like an outcast welcome them introduce them to other people in the church maybe now later explain to them and say oh these are things that you can wear god wants us to cover our bodies stuff like that and make them comfortable in the faith and not make them feel like an outcast or like they don't even belong here make them begin to doubt their salvation so Barnabas is that kind that was what um Barnabas did for paul and you know he brought him he took him to the apostles he basically declared to them that oh this man is now saved he was not even scared so Barnabas is that kind of person that when encourage new converts. Barnabas is that kind of person that new converts need around them to help them um, stay grounded and to help the other members of the church also um, welcome them. That's one of the things that I believe we can learn from Barnabas as um, modern day Christians. Um, the Bible says in verse 20, um, verse 28, and, and said it was with them coming in and going out. And because, you know, Barnabas vouched for Paul, they accepted him. They was able to, you know, flow with other people um, in Jerusalem. So, Apostle Paul, how great, how marvelous he was, you know, his conversion story. If somebody like Barnabas was not there to speak up for him, most likely the church might have believe that he was lying and all of that 
So every new believer, every new convert needs a Barnabas in their lives. So Barnabas was basically like a bridge between Apostle Paul and the church. So every believer is usually, every new convert is usually in that transition stage and they need a Barnabas in their lives to become their bridge to other believers, you know, that might have biases, that might have things and actually maybe if you've even done some things to people in that particular congregation before or maybe to other Christians and they are aware then you need a, Bala, a, a Barnabas in your life to be that bridge to link you up back to the people of God so that's one of the things so everyone needs a Barnabas in their lives to teach to introduce them to encourage them in the faith another scripture that speaks to the life of Barnabas is in Acts chapter 11 in verse 22 Yes, the Bible says, um, this was speaking to the Gentile church in Antioch, and it says, Then tidings of the things which came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came, and had seen the grace of God, was glad, and exalted them all, that with purpose of heart they, should, they would cleave to the Lord, for he was a good man of the Holy Ghost and of faith and much people was added unto the Lord and you know you can see after everything that happened you know after the persecution that arose um, about Stephen um, he traveled all the way to Cyprus um, the preaching of the word and so on and so and so on and so forth and some people were preaching Jesus and they noticed that at the church in Jerusalem they had called that church found out that oh, there were, were new converts in this particular area you know and who did they send? They sent Barnabas to Antioch. And that means they must have seen the church recognize the grace of encouraging new converts in his life. So there are people around you like that. When new converts come, they are the ones always, ah, hey, this person was, let's go and visit this person. Let's go and talk to them. Let's go and help them. Let's teach them the scriptures. Let's encourage them to join the discipleship class. Let's say, do this. Let's do this. Those are the Barnabas in our midst. And you know, we are grateful for them because really, um, the church in Jerusalem recognized this character, they recognized the grace of God upon his And the Bible said that he went and when he got there, he saw the grace of God. And as usual, as, as Barnabas is, you know, he encouraged them, he exhorted them that with purpose of that, that he should cleave to the Lord. And the Bible described him, the Bible said he was a good man. So not good according to, you know, earthly standards, but good because Christ has washed him. You know, he's now a believer. His sins are forgiven. And because he was also doing good works. So righteous works. And the Bible said he was full of the Holy Ghost and faith. So he was not just doing things in the flesh. He didn't just have the charisma, the character to encourage people. But he had the Holy Ghost. He was full of the Holy Ghost. He was full of faith. And because of that, much people were even added to the church. Because the person that came to encourage the new combat, the person that um, came to exhort them to continue in the faith, they saw the lifestyle in him. They saw the character of love. And that means there's no way you will have you know, this kind of character and not have love in you. The Bible said it was full of the Holy Ghost, full of faith. Faith cannot work without love. So for Barnabas to have done this, so Barnabas was that kind of person that you know that was giving, that was loving, that was en an encourager. He was full of the Holy Ghost. He was a good man. That's one of the things that you know um, that we also saw in the life of Barnabas. And I hope you're really learning a lot because when I was reading this, I was just like, wow. And I was just picturing people, and you know. I, I don't know if when you gave your life to Christ, you had one person encourage you. That person most likely played the role of, the role of Barnabas in your life. And be grateful to those people because sometimes as a young convert, you just give your life. There are so many challenges here and there. But having that one person encouraging you, strengthening you, telling you to keep pushing, praying with you, um, showing you scriptures, you know, guiding you, as answering questions that you might have. It really goes a long way to encourage a new convert. Another scripture that speaks to him encouraging also is Acts chapter 13 verse 43. I will just read from verse 32. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation were broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. So basically everywhere that you know, Barnabas was basically mentioned. He speaks of encouragement. He continues to encourage converts to continue. You know, the pastor will preach. Somebody will preach the message. You get saved. 
but the ministry continues in your life through people like Barnabas that will encourage you. So this is some these are some of the things that we can see um in that we can see in the life of Barnabas. And a lot of times, you know, the value of encouragement is not seen because it's usually in the um hiding, you know. He was actually an apostle, he was it was like Paul, it was like Peter, but his ministry was not really out there because maybe he was not the first person to preach to them to get born again. He might not be the one performing the miracles. He might not be the one, you know, casting out devils and all of that. But he was there to encourage the people because if as a human being, there are days of discouragement, there are days of challenges, even in the faith, but he was there to encourage these believers to continue. There are days that you might even, you know, people might not understand you in the church, and these are people of God too, but somebody like Barnabas comes, holds your hands, prays with you, helps you to see things in the light of the word of God and in the light of the will of God. So this is some of the things that we've learned from Barnabas, and I'll just be sharing something some things from my Bible here that speaks to um, the life of Barnabas. So uh, some of the things that were said here was that the strength and accomplishment of Barnabas. It was one of the first um, set of the uh, set of Christians in Jerusalem to sell their possession. It was the first to travel with Paul on his missionary team, and he was an encourager, as his nickname shows, and thus one of the most quietly influential people in the early church. And it was also called an apostle, although not originally part of the 12, you know, apostles. Um, one of the mistakes that he made was, you know, at some point in his life when um, uh, Peter was staying aloof um, from the Gentiles, he also stood back um, with Peter at that point. And that was when Apostle Paul corrected him. So he had that um, weakness too at that point. But he also repented just like um, Peter. Then another thing that we can also see from his life is like, Encouragement is one of the most effective ways to help people. Um, sometimes obedience to God might actually involve, you know, us taking a risk because him having to travel all the way to Antioch to meet people that he does not even know, but he still took the risk and there's always someone who needs encouragement. So Barnabas was basically mentioned a lot in the New Testament and like I said, his work was not that that was out there casting out devils, healing the sick, but understanding the importance of encouragement. So Barnabas was actually called the son of consolation. And my question to you today is, if you've recognized this grace and this gift upon your life, don't be discouraged that uh, maybe you, nobody really sees you, nobody really recognizes you. God sees you. God sees the work that you're doing in the lives of people through your giving through your encouragement, you are the one encouraging newcomers, you are the one encouraging newcomers about their salvation, you are the one um, sending them text messages, you are the one praying with them, you are the one um, excited about their journey with Jesus. God sees all those things and God will reward you adequately and if you have, you know, um, any Barnabas around you, 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 every ministry needs a Barnabas for that ministry to survive. That's what I've, I've, I've realized even from the life of this man. If you notice Barnabas in the church that you attend or you notice people, you remember them, send them a message to tell them thank you because sometimes the encourager needs to be encouraged also. Seeing that their work, the work they do, I know God will reward them, but the work they do is not in vain. So that's just, uh, the summary of the life of Barnabas, you can read more of those scriptures, learn from him, um, apply those things to your life. You don't, it's not enough to just have the grace, but the moment you are full of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit do, does a lot of work in our lives to help us in um, and other believers in their time of need. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was enlightening for you. I hope light was shed on your heart and I hope that um, the grace of God will be sufficient for you to fulfill your call, to fulfill that which God has called you to do at whatever phase or stage you are in your life at this point. If you need an encourager, God will send you your own Barnabas. And if you had the Barnabas that God has chosen for people, I pray that you will not be weak, you will not be weary, you will not be tired, you will not be carried away by dissimulation in the name of Jesus. So thank you so much for staying with me if you watch till the end. And God bless you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.